MTD CNC have travelled to Derby today. We're at Star GB. I'm in their PDI workshop. I'm with Alec Warner here. We're going to be talking about um, how sliding head lathes these days are being used for applications that you may think should be done on a milling machine. Um, Alec, can you tell us about this part and uh, the fact you've just won this order and what they're actually what the part is and what they're doing? Yeah, this is a part for our customer TNC Precision. Um, it's a component that has been won back from China. Uh, annual volume is approximately 31,000 pieces. So this component, along with some other exotic stainless steel uh, components, will take up the capacity on their new SV38R. Now, if you could just turn that through 180 degrees as well and maybe show us some of a few of the other faces. It is very uh, evident to me that when you look at that, my first thought would be that's perfect for either a five-axis machine or a, certainly, certainly a prismatic part, a milling machine. Absolutely, but I think you know the way we looked at components, uh, we did a time study on this particular component and the customer could see quite clearly that with our balanced milling capability on the SV, we could hit that cycle time and make this component profitable for them to take on. Uh, how common is it now for you to be talking to your customers about changing the whole philosophy, changing the concept on their manufacturing as a result of the sort of technology that Star are offering? I think it's becoming more, uh, more so in the last two or three years where customers are looking at higher value parts on sliders, not just you know, typical nuts, bolts, washers, that type of thing. They're looking at you know, really complex components and with the um, multi-channel, multi-axis capability that we've got, you know, we can hit those components with a really, really uh, quick cycle time. So how do you improve the cycle time on a part like this? Is it as a result of being able to do uh, two operations at once or is it, is it down to uh, the, the second spindle? What are the features that aid the production? For the particular way we're going to manufacture this part, it's got to come out of a certain uh, diameter material. It's got to come out of 30 stock. So we're going to make this mainly on head one, but because we can balance mill and finish two phases at the same time, that's going to save us a lot of time. The customer looked at other combinations of machine, twin spindle, twin turret, but on our machines, because of the idle time reductions, we got the, uh, we got the order. And, and does the unmanned run come into it as well? The very fact that once the part is in operation and the bars are loaded, there's no more operator needed. Oh, for sure, and you know that's the, that's the big thing about sliding heads in general, that you can leave them running and they're designed and they're built for unmanned running. So we don't have to add anything to the machine tool. It's, 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 that's how it's built for unmanned operation. Uh, and when you, when you deliver this machine here to that customer, is it, are you doing a, a full turnkey on it so it will hit the deck and your assurances to them are is we will make this part in a particular time uh, so that you can fulfill your, your business from China? It is, it's part of the contract. Um, and you know, this year already, you know, this is the third turnkey that we've, we've, we've started. We've got two others in the pipeline that are going to kick off very shortly. So it's, it's, it's turnkey after turnkey after turnkey at Star GB. That's the way we do business. And, and does it matter what tolerances they're chasing on a particular part like this? Because for me, if you're pushing two tools, if you've got one tool one side and one tool another, is the component not going to move or going to flex as a result of the forces? Well, obviously, we're going to have to do roughing and finishing operations like we would on uh, most components. But I think with the capability of the machine, you know, we've got the turret, we've got the platen, we can hit this with a lot of tools and get it absolutely perfect for the customer. And the balancing then, you said most of the work is done on the first op, so the second op on the subspindle is just, is just finishing the We're component. just going to qualify the back end on the subspindle, so it is, it is really sort of head one heavy in this case. Isn't that um, a disadvantage? Because I thought one of the keys to these machines is you try to, you try to keep both spindles going in order to, to reduce that cycle time. Well, I think originally when we did look at the component, we looked at doing it um, you know, head one and head two, uh, and that's basically machining it in that orientation, but the customer can only get a certain diameter stock, which means we've got to machine it this way, but still with the turret, with the plan, we'll still get it in the cycle time, we're quite sure. Um, I think this, the message here is very clear. If you're making components that you, you may be thinking are, are perfect for, for VMCs and five axis machines, you may not be making them as productively or as efficiently as you could do on a sliding head lathe like this from Star GB. This is certainly uh, one of the reasons why business here uh, is on the up and has been for the last couple of years. Thank you very much, Alec. You're welcome.